Now, I'm very honored to present the Simon Benson Award for Philanthropy to Dr. Karen Brown Wilson and Dr. Michael DeShane. Karen and Michael have devoted their lives to helping people with limited means age with dignity. They're humble but absolutely revolutionary pioneers whose investments in education continue to improve lives across the globe. Please enjoy this video highlighting Karen and Michael's achievements and contributions over the years. I was born in the most southern town in West Virginia, War, West Virginia. My father was a coal miner. When he got sick, we moved back to eastern Tennessee with my mom and my siblings. When I was 18 and ready to go to college, my mom gave me a one-way plane ticket to Washington State. I got my bachelor's degree from the University of Washington, my master's degree from Seattle University, and then I came down to Portland and did my PhD at Portland State. I was born in Los Angeles, lived there till I was nine. Uh, my father died when I was four, so my mother, we bounced around a little bit, and we ended up moving to Seattle. Got my bachelor's at San Jose State, came up here, got my master's and PhD here at Portland State. Well, I've known Karen and Michael for about 20 years. Very committed, uh, particularly to the uh, programs in the College of Urban Public Affairs and the Institute on Aging. I knew that I wanted to work in the field of aging. My mom had a stroke when she was 56. I was her primary caretaker. She was very frustrated at living in a nursing home. She wanted a different kind of life and it really made an impact on my thinking about how are we going to help people who can't take care of themselves. Gerontology was becoming a big thing, so I was offered a traineeship to pursue my PhD with uh, $300 a month and tuition and all that stuff paid. So I said, oh, why not? Old people are okay. I, can, I may be one someday. <laughs> so, what we now take for granted in the field of aging, this whole notion of assisted living, they conceived it, fought the battles that needed to be fought to make that part of the continuum of care, and the rest is kind of history. Michael and Karen both uh, share some very common traits, and that is absolutely unpretentious, uh, genuine, down-to-earth, caring people. They also are visionaries in founding the Jesse F. Richardson Foundation, which was uh, named in honor of Karen's mother. They scholarshiped upper division students to make international trips to their mission of the foundation in Nicaragua. Karen not only introduced these students to that, she changed their lives. That's her gift. Their generosity is unique in a way. Their concept of scholarshipping a cohort of students, over a dozen, in a single year through Clackamas Community College and putting them on track to take advantage of the opportunity to have credits recognized by Portland State as well. They do not know boundaries. My parents weren't able to financially afford paying for four years of school for me. I applied for the CCC Foundation scholarships and they matched me up with the DeShane Wilson Scholarship, which I believe I was one of the first 10 to receive that. Having that financial support through college, which is something that's so ridiculously expensive, made it to where I never had to worry about that. I couldn't have gone to school without the financial support I received. The fellowships, the scholarships, the stipends, um, it just wouldn't have been possible. And so I felt that I had been invested in. So it seemed if we could in some way make it a little easier for other people to attend college, uh, we could do that. There are lots of things that you, you can support, and, and we support many things, but certainly education is the pretty safe bet that you'll get a pretty good return for society on your investment. It's not only giving back out of gratitude, but it's recognizing that that's the way that we improve the world that we live in. Karen and Michael, please join me on the stage. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations, Michael.
Good evening. Um, well, Michael and I always have a little discussion on who's going to go first. And he just told me that I should go first because I would surely have something more substantive to say. Um, we're very flattered and humbled to receive this award. It's truly an honor um, that you think we're worthy of it. Thank you. It never ceases. It never ceases to amaze that others praise us for something that brings us so much pleasure. I have often told the story of my mother telling me to be someone who could and would do something for others. That power lives in everyone. Every time you invest your time, your talent, or your treasure in individuals, organizations, or causes, you add greatly to the possibility that you're helping something good happen. We believe that everyone has the power to change lives for the better in big ways and in small ways. We know that um, everyone is anxious to hear Jay Leno, so we're going to keep our remarks um, as short as possible. We will never forget the impact that our lives had because we were lucky enough to be graduates of Portland State University. We are proud, involved alums, and will continue to be so um, as long as we're able. Along the way, many people invested in Michael and myself, but there's one person that I particularly want to uh, mention tonight who is here, and that is our professor at Portland State University, Dr. Leonard Kane, who at 90, is still at it. Leonard, thank you so much. I I'm just going to tell a quick story of one of the most valuable lessons I learned from Leonard. Of course, at that time, I called him Dr. Kane. Um, when I was um, going to my first um, national a conference, um, I really wanted to figure out how to get to know people. And Leonard gave me some advice that turned out to be really good advice. He said, stand at the bottom of the escalator or the top of the escalator, because everyone you want to meet eventually will either come up or go down the escalator. <laughs> and you know, right, you know what, Leonard, you were right. Leonard um, demonstrates fully the beauty of having purpose throughout your life and using it. And we hope that everyone has that opportunity to have purpose and to use it. And my final thing that I want to say is that we're very uh, fortunate tonight to have um, many friends and colleagues joining us. And we're so grateful that we're able to share this evening with you. And in particular, we want to recognize our granddaughter, Emily. Wave your hand, Emily. Who is a freshman at Portland State University. And of course, our son, Sean. Thank you so much. I knew I had something written down. <laughs> Leonard, Leonard, you always told me to stand in the middle of the elevator <laughs> or the escalator. I kept kind of keeping those steps. I kept walking up for a while trying to stay. I never met anybody. <laughs> now I learn I'm supposed to be at the top at the bottom. Uh, 
First, I want to thank everybody. This is really kind of cool. And good thing I got all these lights. It's like being in a theater back in the old days. You can't see anybody out there. It seems a bit strange to me that we are receiving an award for doing something that is intrinsically, intrinsically rewarding. Uh, our goal, I mean, we're appreciative and proud to receive the award. I wish my high school teachers could see me now. <laughs> One, they were. <laughs> uh, in reality, there are very few things I like to remember about my high school years. <laughs> I do remember, however, being told often about the importance of college, of hard work, of commitment, of goal setting and persistence. Extremely valuable precepts, every one of them. They're just great. I've given a lot of thought to the importance of these Indeed, I have passed them on to others over the years, teaching and, and uh, but for me, compliance was difficult. And I struggled. But then around 1978, an epiphany, I didn't need to set goals. I didn't need to work hard. I didn't need to persist. I didn't need to consist myself commit myself, excuse me, to goals, I could receive the benefit of all these noble truisms rather easily and for the most part enjoyable. I could marry somebody who personifies every one of these things. <laughs> yeah. And I did so. And now I'm standing up here in front of all these people that I can't see, but I love every one of you. And most of all, I love Dr. Karen Wilson. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations.